live. This is Christopher Copley, president of Search 365. And I'm going to spend some time with you this morning, hopefully giving you some tips that will help you build your business and, and, should I say, explode your business over the next few months. Hey, look, let me start with some housekeeping. And, uh, and that is, guys, you build your business from event to event. Uh, that is the way you build. If you rally people and get them in front of the top leaders, the top trainers, you get them to seek the recognition and start to envision themselves being recognized for the promotions they're going to get, the bonuses they're going to get. And then those people bring people to the next event who bring people to the next event. And you can determine whether your team is growing or dying based upon attendance at events. You know, this is what we've always done. You know, as we were coming up through the system, you would always see the leaders in the back of the room counting how many people they have in the room. We always knew how many people we had at each event. That was how we determined whether we were doing a good job as a leader was based upon attendance. See guys, this is not just about you getting to events. If you're a leader, it's about how many people you can get to events. Because the more of your team that you get trained by somebody other than you, the bigger and more successful your team becomes. See guys, people, you know, uh, uh, I don't know the exact saying, but it's hard to be a savior in your own home. You know, most people will get used to you. Most people will become tone deaf to you if you're their leader that they're listening to over and over and over again. Your objective is to get your people in front of other leaders, other people, and so that the information is fresh. Usually it's not much different. Winning is winning. What it takes to win is what it takes to win. And I don't care how many different ways people say it, it's still the same information of what it takes to be a winner. And, but, but people receive things differently. And so by many different people teaching, there's more of a chance that they will get it from somebody. You see, when a when student is ready, the teacher will appear. So you build from event to event. And, uh, and so we've got coming up the Western Regional Red Carpet. You know, this is an event that Arlen and the CT team has done every year for the last nine years. I've been to all nine of them. I will be at this one. Uh, you want to rally your team out. It's, it's such a great event because it has so much variety. There's something for everyone. If you're interested in meeting vendors and learning about travel, learning about building a business, whatever it is you're interested in learning about, it's there. And you also enjoy Las Vegas, which is a huge destination spot for a lot of travelers, and you don't have the ability to explain it and tell them where to go and what to do, because this event is power packed with all that type of information. So, see you guys in Las Vegas for the Western Regional Red Carpet. Coming up right behind that is the Winners Win National Harbor. Guys, this is going to be the most incredible Winners Win uh, that we've ever done. National Harbor at the Gaylord Hotel, an absolutely five-star uh, location and opportunity for you not only to get the kind of training and meet other leaders in the company, but meet people who have been successful in life. I think that's just so important to understand how successful people live and, and, be, and be elbow to elbow with those people so that you can most importantly realize they're no different than you. The difference between them and you is they decide to go to work. And that's it. And there's no super genius gene that you want born with your ability to be successful. And so it's always important that you in these types of environments. The National Harbor is a beautiful location. Once again, you're going to learn so much about the harbor. There's going to be plenty of time to enjoy the harbor, plenty of time to get to know the different leaders. And I will be doing something I, I don't think I've ever done, which is an entire training on recruiting people. It's going to be a power pack thing to recruiting and building your business. So if you want to be a part of that, it's never been done. Probably won't be done again for a long time. And uh, and it's not going to go live or be recorded. You have to be there. I think there's about 100 seats left. And guys, we're still two months out. We still got the rest of April and May before we come to this event in June. It's already almost sold out. I think there's just about 100 seats left. So don't wait, guys. Don't be that person that thinks you're going to get in at the last minute and it ends up being sold out and you can't get in. I mean, 
you want to go ahead and set that registration line and get yourself registered for the team. So that you can guarantee you and your team gets in that event uh, come June 8th. Incredible things are going to take place. And then we're right around the corner from the convention. Our international convention this year is going to be totally unlike any other convention that we've done. Everything from just the events, the scheduling, uh, how we're going to do recognition, how we're going to do the trip. Everything is different than it's ever been before. So you want to make sure that you're coming to this year's international convention. I think it's going to be called the convention of directors. I think we're going to promote more directors at this convention than probably any single convention we've ever had, you know, in service. So you don't want to miss this convention. Most importantly, most of you want to make sure you get promoted to director at this convention. So make sure you're registered, make sure you're ready to be there, and uh, make sure you rather to achieve your goals and dreams so you can be promoted at this convention. So guys, what I want to talk to you about is just some fundamentals of what it takes to truly be successful as a leader and take your business to the next level. Most of you heard me talk about at the spring training that this really comes down to understanding and belief. Those are the top two things that you first have to, to, to really take hold of. And then these are the two things you got to help people really get a hold of in order for them to be successful. You gotta make sure you understand this business. You gotta understand the business and the industry you're in. And, and you and see if you understand this then you know the value of it. Two, you gotta believe. See you gotta believe you can achieve anything you want to achieve in this system. See not just in the world, a lot of you have general belief. But it's not just general belief. You gotta believe in this business. So you got to believe that this is going to be the business to help you achieve your goals and dreams. you got to believe, and listen to me guys, I know this isn't some of your goals and dreams. You have other goals and dreams that you're hoping to get the money here to help you launch those other, and that's okay. But you got to believe you can get that money here. So you put in the work and the time and the effort and the energy to get it so you can take that money and go invest in what other is your goals and dreams. You may have, but you got to understand it. You got to believe. It. You got to help new people understand it and believe. It. See, when people understand and believe, they don't quit. See, some of you are like, how do I get my retention? How do I get my people from quitting? How do I get my help them understand this? Help them believe. Well, how do I help them understand and believe? Understand comes from studying. Here's a simple thing you can do. Take the flip chart presentation and read it over and over again until you realize. 90% of what we do, what our products are, and how we get paid is right there in the flip chart. But because somebody else is doing it and you're halfway paying attention, you don't learn quickly what this is about. And therefore, you don't understand. So the first thing you should do is you should practice. You should practice the flip chart every single day. Practice it in the mirror. Practice reading it over and over again until you memorize it. And then you'll be amazed how somebody will ask you a question and you'll know the answer. Second part of understanding, don't miss any events, any training, any conference call. See, if you get on all of that stuff early in your career, It'll start to sink into your head and you'll really start to understand what this business and this industry is all about. And then belief is first of all, if you see anyone else do it, then you know you can. See, see guys, they're, they're, again, like I said, this is this is not about talent. This is about ability. And each and every one of you have the ability to do anything that we offer in this business. And if you see one person do it, that should assure you that you can. The second step in belief is to do in the goals you set out to do. And as you start to achieve them, your confidence, your belief level, continue to go up. 
we need to get that fast start bonus for 150, we need to get that first fast start bonus for 1,000, and we start to get one and two and three thousand dollar bonuses. We get the first ten thousand dollar bonus. We we get promoted to reach that every step increases your belief. And then you gotta hold other people's hands until they achieve these same steps that will increase their belief. So those are two things you gotta commit to. Now I'm going to give you a few more to add to them. Because the third thing is that you have to have patience. See, everybody's walk, everybody's journey is different. You're going to have some people here that are going to, because of their market or something they've done in their life or, or a position they held before, and take off really fast and start to have success really, really quick. And you're going to have some people who are going to take off really slow and inch along until they start to achieve their goals and dreams. Hey, you don't know which one you are until you get in the fight and start fighting, until you start getting after it. You start making things happen, and then you'll start to see the speed by which you're moving. Here's the key be patient. Don't beat up on yourself. Don't get frustrated. See, so see, when it's your time, it's your time. And it's always seemed like it, it took longer than you wanted it to, but when it happens, it's going to feel like it was right on time. So, you be patient and keep walking your walk. That's the most important thing for you, is to, is to be patient and, and absolutely walk your walk. Here's the fourth thing. You got to be focused. I understand that this is a part-time business opportunity for most people, which means there's a full-time job somewhere that, that demands a certain amount of attention. I get it. But, but from the time you're not working in your weekends or whatever time you set aside to serve, you got to be focused. And you got to display that focus to the people that are following you because it's difficult to build a group of people following you if you're all over the place. So I think it's very, I, when I look at social media right now, I see so many of our leaders that are doing so many things. That I, I, I would be, it would be hard for me to follow you because I'm not sure which thing I should be duplicating. So here's my tip with social media take the time to separate. You should have a dedicated social media page for serve. And you should have all of your surge friends downline in that page. And then whatever else you do, your personal page, when you post what you're eating, uh, your family, and your nieces, nephews, your grandchildren, that should be your personal page. And that's where your friends and family should be. And, and if you have other businesses, they should have their own page. Because search what you think about building a network marketing, and that's why you have to understand the industry that you're in, is people are trying to follow you. They're duplicating you. But they don't understand what they're supposed to do. If I see that you have 10 companies and you make a lot of money, you know what I'm wondering? Which one of the 10 is paying you the most money? Is it search? Or is it one of the other ones? Maybe I should be over here trying to learn that business instead of learning certain. Maybe I should figure out how to get that license. Maybe I should, maybe all of their money's coming. See, and when your people start thinking like that, that lack of focus slows down, causes people to quit, causes confusion. Guys, you gotta get focused. If you're gonna build an army, you got to be sold out to what you're building that on. And I'm not saying you can't do other stuff. You have to probably in some cases to earn it until you start earning enough in your research. And some of those other things may be goals and dreams you've always had that you intend to achieve. Not saying stop. I'm saying clear the mechanism and make sure your search business has focus and your search team has blinders on 
and all they see is how to win a search when they look at you. And if that means it has to be a dedicated certain page, then that's what you do. But I'm telling you, a lot of you are slowing your business down because when people look at you, they see success. They just have no idea where it's coming. And if they don't know where it's coming from, how can they get excited about following? How can they get excited about doing it? How do they even know how to do it? So, focus. Is that helpful? So I said, understand. I said, believe. I said, be patient. I said, be focused. And then my training today is about the fifth one, which is you got to be excited. So you got to be able to stay excited as long as it takes to do it. See, this is where the challenge comes in. Most people can be excited for a couple of minutes. Some can even be excited for a couple of hours. So some of you have figured out how to be excited in a couple of days. Some of you may be even... So, some of you can put in a good blitz of 90 days, total enthusiasm and excitement. But see, the real challenge is that you got to be excited for as long as it takes things that you win. See, in some of your cases, that might be excited for years. How do you be excited? How do you stay excited? And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. See, I'm going to give you eight steps to stay excited for as long as it takes to win. Until you start to achieve your goals and dreams, I'm going to give you eight steps to stay excited. God, this is excitement and enthusiasm is contagious. So is negativity. And you got to pick which one you're going to spread. And it's going to be excitement and enthusiasm. You got to work at that. See, it's easy to spread negativity. You can get sucked into negativity so fast you don't know what happens. But, but positivity, enthusiasm, excitement, you got to work at that. That takes work. You know, that's why most people face frowns all the time. Because frowning is easy. Smiling requires you to use muscles in your face. It's work. It take, it's a muscle. You ever smile so long it hurts? That's because you're using a muscle to smile. I've never heard that anybody say, I frown so long it hurts. It doesn't take anything. They take anything to have a blank expression. But, but smiling can actually hurt because it requires muscles. It requires work. And so excitement and enthusiasm, it requires work. Here's eight steps to help you. The first one is focus on growth in all areas and talk about it. See, guys, you've got so many opportunities to grow. Grow in your business with how many teammates are joining you, or, or grow with how many contacts you're making, or, or grow with how many prospects, new people you meet, and phone numbers you get. Uh, grow in how many sales you make. Grow in how much money you make. Grow as a person and how many books you read. Grow. There's so many areas in growth from your business to personal development. And you gotta just make sure you're always growing and then always talk about that growth. Always keep that in the forefront of your mind and on the tip of your tongue that you're experiencing growth. See that see, see when most people aren't excited is because they don't think they're growing. They don't think they're achieving anything. They don't think they're getting closer to their goals. So their excitement starts to wane. Their, their enthusiasm starts to decline. See, if you're always focused on growing, and that's what you talk about, and guess what? If that's what you talk about, then guess what your people will do? They'll focus on growing, and that's what they'll talk about. And before you know it, they'll come to you and say, you know, this week is my week because I finished this book and started another one, or I did this, or I did that, or I grew here, or I had another person, or I did five presentations, I did six travel uh, parties, I did... They're, they're looking at their growth and they're going, oh, well, last week, that was, that was great. See, see, that's one way that you stay excited, focus on growth. 
Here's the second one, guys. And this is the one that everybody always feels uncomfortable and feels crazy. But the truth is, it's the most important. I always tell people 90% of women is that space in between your two years. See, if you can manage this, you can do anything. See, the second step to staying excited is you're going to tell yourself you're excited even when you don't feel like it, even when you're not. You got to say, I'm alive, I'm awake, and I feel great, even though you just woke up feeling half dead and your back hurt and your foot hurts and, and always something to age with. When you get my age every morning that you wake up, something hurts. But I don't focus on the hurt. I focus on I'm alive. I'm awake. So I feel great. And I tell myself that every day. I tell myself that, man, this is a great what? I woke up and the sun is shining, which means I can go out and do something. Man, I, I tell myself things like this all the time. I feel good. I feel fine. I, I feel this way all the time. I know I sound like a cat mad, but I'm lying. But most importantly, I'm talking to myself and telling myself whether I actually do or not, and I feel good. And guess what ends up happening? I end up feeling funny. I end, I end up feeling excited. I end up being enthusiastic. Because that's what I told myself to be. And guess what I've learned? My brain will do whatever I demand that it do. If I demand nothing, then it will do what something, what the world demands that it do. But it constantly does what's demanded of it. The key is, are you doing making the demands, or is the world, or your family, or your friends the ones demanding from you and from your brain how you should feel and what you should because somebody's demanding. So number two is make sure you are. Tell yourself you're excited. Tell yourself you feel great. Tell yourself how awesome it is to be high. Tell yourself how incredible it is to be blessed. Tell yourself how you're moving closer to your goals and dreams. Tell yourself how you can't be stopped. You actually start to believe in you. If you tell us. Hey, number three. And this one is tough. This is the tough one. This hurts a little. I'm going to try to deliver it gently, but it, it hurts sometimes. To hear this. See, number three. You got to understand that you can change the direction of your life. Oh. You can change whatever you want to change about your life in a moment. All you have to do is make a decision that you're going to change. See, here's what most people don't want to understand. We're all exactly where we deserve to be in life based on the decisions we make six months to a year. Of course, that's not true. I didn't make any decision. Not making a decision is a decision. See, see, if you're right now struggling, if you right now don't have the money you need, you can't do the things you want to do. If life is, is a little up, all of that is happening because six months ago to a year ago, you didn't make a decision. But you were going to figure out how to make sure that didn't happen. Most of you didn't make a decision at all. And just keep letting life go. And wherever you fall, you fall. See, successful people understand that. You got to set goals. You got to make decisions. And when you do that, and you have everything you got, you change your distinction. And when you don't, then your station in life is what it is. Either way, it's your decision. It's your fault. See, stop looking for other answers and other people and other things. You need to decision. You want your life to be different. 
about six months to a year from now, you need to make new decisions to make. So that and you should be excited about the fact that you have the power to, you have the ability to make a decision to that changed things instantly. Make your decision today. That six months to a year from now, the whole life changes. See, the fact that I know that never things are going like I want them to go, my instant decision changes. I love knowing that I have that power. See, that, that, that's how you stay inside. Things like go wrong, you know, just not the system. I control this. That's the important. Number four, that's why you gotta set long term and short term goals. You gotta be absolutely obsessed about it. So you gotta sit, you always gotta have a long term and you gotta have a short term goal. Because that's the decision of what you're running. Those goals are the blueprint. To what your life's going to be like, not your life. So you got to be obsessed with that. Hey, number five. This one is this is so important to being excited. Because you got to look for the good in that. You got to look for the good in that. See when you see see when you start identifying the bad and responding to the bad. That's what creates the negativity. In your life, look for the good in everyone. You know, I, I, I came up to a rough neighborhood and I had a pretty challenge from childhood and lifestyle. And uh, and I still, you know, communicate with a lot of people I grew up with. And sometimes I go back to some of the places I grew up. And you know, sometimes I ask myself, why? You know, I hear about so many bad things happening, people rob and this and that and the other. Why don't many of those things happen? And I realize it's because I, I look for the good in everything. And I treat people like the good that I see in them. And because of that, guess what? They respond in kind. And they retreat and they treat me like the good that they see in me. Now I might be talking to a robber or a killer at that point, but they make a decision not to rob or kill me because I treated them like a good human being. And so they respond in time. So you gotta look for the good in everything. And then the, and they will respond in time. And that creates an environment where you have excitement and positivity and enthusiasm. If you get caught up in everybody's flaws and you decide you're gonna be the person to point out everybody's flaws, people will respond in time and they're gonna attack you, your flaws and the things that are wrong with you. And that can create an environment of negativity and So that's making for I'm going to look for the good of everyone. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. And that's what I'm going to comment about. And that's what is going to be the important thing that I say something about to this person. And you can be an environment that needs to lose that impact to you. This is so important to stay in the sense that you've got to stay, you've got to stay excited as long as it takes. You've got to learn these techniques of how to do it. you got to commit to personal improvement. That's number six. Commit to personal improvement. What does that mean? Guys, you got to read seminars. You know, I, I, I do a winner's winner. You go, oh, and one now it's another event. Look, I, I've spent thousands of dollars on myself. You can't expect you to go make millions or billions, and you're not willing to spend hundreds or thousands on yourself. Seriously, how do you think this works? I've spent thousands on workshops and classes and 40 hour weekends and Anthony Robbins and uh, Waking the Giant Firewall and uh, all these different, you know, workshops and seminars on how to get better and how to be better. Thousands of dollars to get my little lapel pin that says I completed it. Most importantly, 
to know and push myself that I can do anything and, and grow and be anything. So you got to commit to personal improvement. Whatever works for you. If it's read a book a day, if it's read a book a week, if it's go to a seminar, a workshop, it's get some DVDs and watch them on TV. I don't care what your choice of improvement is. What's important is that you constantly work on constantly work on and it will constantly improve your attitude about life. Number seven, this is a big one. You got to believe that we have a higher purpose. See, if this is only about money to you, it's going to be hard to stay excited. You got to believe your life's about more than just how much money. Because I promise you, if you don't figure out what your life's about, Money's not going to make you happy by itself. There's a ton of rich, unhappy people. Tell them, one of the richest men in the world, Amazon, Benzo, just got a divorce. How are you worth $140 billion? You can get a divorce without even having money. Like, Good. Where can you get my wife apart $140 billion? That's what most people think. Two things. If you don't believe your life has a higher purpose, if you don't believe your phone, what your phone comes into, 140 billion will be time. So you've got to believe that we can I believe there's a reason that I get up on a Saturday morning and teach this class. I believe that somebody is watching me that needs to hear the things that I'm saying. I believe that, that, that somebody, a life I'm supposed to affect is why I get up and do this every morning. See, I, I believe that with everything in me. I don't think it's everybody. I don't think it's hundreds of people. I don't think it's thousands of people. I think it's one. And if there's one person that I say something to that takes it and runs with it and changes their life, I've achieved my purpose. My purpose is to help someone win. Now, as a result, I may help thousands win. I may help millions win. That's consequential. I gotta help one. Or I will not have my purpose. And so I get up with enthusiasm to do this training because I know you're listening. I know you're watching. I don't know who you are, and I don't need to. It's not. It's not for my gratification. It's my purpose. I would have not been put in the position I'm in if it wasn't to do what I do. You don't get where I am by accident. See, this is what I say to myself. This is what I believe. It allows me to stay excited and crack at the drama and the issues. People, people who don't like you, the people who think it's your trainings are corny, the people see all of that don't bother me because it's more personal. Who you are, I hope you hear me, I hope you're loving me. This is for you. And that's my job. Now, why do you do it here? See, number seven is you got to believe you got a higher purpose. And I really need the way that we and Coach came together and how it evolved, evolved from what we were talking about to what it is today. It's totally our relationship's totally different than what we were in there. It had to be a higher power involved in that for us to end up here and have what we have now. In his vision, to help us in the house and my purpose just to help them, help them. All involved. Some people say, man, this is a great thing, but that wasn't my goal. I didn't know. I didn't know this vision. I did not have a vision that day. And somehow, I was brought in the fear to be in a position to do this. 
and the heart of vision is so much greater than what I want to come up with myself. That, that's not an accident. And, and, and what triggered me to really submit to coach and, and be mentored by coach when he told the story about his mom on Christmas Eve and how she told him to go out and find something because he was meant to change the world. And, 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 and then she died on Christmas and I'll, my friend did was Christmas. Now, I don't think it was the same year at the same time. Back then, she left and I was born that same day. And when he told that story, something in me moved and said, I'm supposed to help you. Now, this just all may be in my head. Hey, I didn't ask you how did your purpose get in there. I'm asking you. When I heard him tell that story, I knew I was supposed to help. From that one call, I knew that I loved him. And I'm saying, that's a story. That's, that's the one. Something in me said, that's what I'm supposed to do. She told him to come change the world. She had him prison as a nice woman on prison. She probably said me. Yeah. And that might be my own crazy, but it's what makes me feel good. It keeps me excited about where I think I'm supposed to be, helping who I'm supposed to help, help 10,000 families come find each That's me. What's your high purpose? Find it. It'll help you stay excited. Number eight, you gotta flush the negative past out of your mind. See, you can't be positive and excited long range if you're still thinking about negative, frustrating things from the past. And what do I mean by the past? I mean 30 seconds ago is the past. So if you're still holding on to something that's a day old, a week old, a month old, six months old, you are killing yourself. You are destroying your ability to, to keep this space between your two ears positive and excited and enthusiastic until you achieve your goals and dreams because you're holding on to the negative past. You're holding on to crap that happened that you can't change. So you understand if something happens in the past, you can't change it. You can change your future, but you cannot go back and change anything in your past. No one has the power to change the past. Therefore, why are you wasting any energy on it? Why, why are you spending and why are you allowing it to have anything to do with your future? If you can't change it. See, whether the outcome was favorable to you or not, you can't change it. So flush it and make new, more favorable memories. And that's how you stay positive and excited. So I gave you eight points. I started off with the five things that you absolutely have to control and master. And that is your understanding of this business, your belief that you can do this business, right? Number three, I said your patience. It's so important. Number four, I said your focus. It's so important. Number five, I said your excitement, positivity, and enthusiasm. And I give you eight keys to how to keep that up. It's so important. See, guys, leadership is a learned process. It's not a, nobody's born a leader. It's not a characteristic or trait that's passed down from your parents. Leadership is learned. It's not a talent. See, see, that's the thing that differentiates me from, you know, I talk all the time about where I live and I live around talented people. Good friend of mine, Clark the Clark, a Hall of Fame basketball player. He's also like six, seven, six, eight in height. 
See, that's not that. You can't, you can't make that happen. You're born with the genes to grow that top. You, or you're not. He is. I'm not. But then with that, he, I'm sure he practices to become the best and, and jump and his ability to jump and his ability. Those are talents and things. Graham Corny, Yolanda Adams, one of the greatest gospel singers got in the voice. It's absolutely incredible. I can't sit. I, I can practice all I want. He ain't ever going to sing like that. That's a talent. That's a gift. Nothing I can do. James Harden probably going to be the MVP. Literally, go to the corner, make a right. Go two gates down, make a left. You're at his house. Probably going to be the NBA, NBA MVP. It's a change in the game. Talent. I can practice to my good faith. He ain't ever going to be that good. But I live here in this home with my lifestyle and my cars and the beautiful things that I have and the things I've been blessed with because I love a leader. I learned how to be a leader. See, I wasn't born with anything that gives me the right to the lifestyle. I learned that. So where they have talents that are great and have allowed them to achieve a great lifestyle, they can't teach people how to be that. I learned what I know, and I can teach people how to learn what I know so they can have the same result I had. That's my blessing, is my key to success is learnable and therefore can be duplicated by anyone who so chooses to. That's what leadership is. It's learning, not talent. So, as you think about being a leader, hey guys, here's some quick tips. First one is, hey, leaders stand out. They don't blend in. Some of you say you want to be a leader, but you do everything you can to be invisible. Leaders aren't invisible. Leaders stand out. When I walk in a room, people know I'm there. How do they know you're there, Chris? Because I make sure they know I, I smile. I walk fast, I talk a little louder, and I speak to everyone who makes eye contact. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. How you doing? I don't know. But if they look at me, I'm going to speak. I'm going to say hello. Good to see you. And they start going, man, who's that guy? He was on the place. He speaks to everybody. He speaks to no one. He speaks to everybody. Half the time, nobody in there knows me. But before the night's over, everybody's trying to find me. Because I don't blend it. I stand out intentionally. I want them to feel comfortable enough to come over and say, Hi, I'm such and such. And what are you? And what do you do? And I get a chance to tell them. That's how I need to share the business. I attract people. I don't go grab people. I attract people. By standing out, I attract people. People wonder who I am. People desire to get to know who I am. To, to. See, that's leadership. So leadership is you show up early and you stay late. See, so much happens before and after everything. And leaders know that. And become leaders because they're there for it. The conversation with some of the leadership happens before the meeting. A great conversation and information happens after them. But if you're always the last one to get there after everything has started and the first one to leave as soon as it's over, you're missing all the leadership tips that allows you to get the edge on everyone else. So leadership is showing up early. Leadership is stable. My whole career, I've always tried to be there before everybody else. Get a chance to meet people, learn some names, and I stay around afterwards and chat and talk. That's where I learn about people. That's where I learn about leadership. More than what I learn in most meetings. And hey, you gotta dress sharp all the time. 
See, that's leadership. You gotta always be prepared to be the next superstar. See, you're all one person away from an explosion. You're one person away from an explosion, and you don't know where that person can come from. You don't know where you're gonna meet them. You gotta be sharp. You gotta be ready. Now, I'm not saying you gotta always be in a suit or always in a business or I'm saying always dress sharp. Always look your best. If you're gonna wear just a collar, golf shirt, make sure it's pressed and sharp and clean. With a nice belt and some clean shoes. Dress sharp all the time. And leader realizes you gotta be on stage 24 7. You gotta be on stage 24 7. You never know who knows who that knows who. So you can't ever not be on stage. You can't ever not be an ambassador of this company. You can't ever not be a leader of people. You can't be cursing out the waiters and waitresses in restaurants. You can't be yelling at the people who work at the grocery store. You can't be road raging and giving people the finger in the car. You can because that person might be at your next meeting. You don't know who knows who. That person might be on the next Zoom you do and see your face and go, hey, that was the person who cut me off and gave me the finger. And I'm there and they're talking about how they love and want to help people. Bull crap. So you gotta be on stage 24 7. You don't know where your next superstar is coming from. You don't know who in your team can recruit them, even if it's not you. You don't know who, know who, who know who, who know who. So you just gotta be on stage 24 7. I know that's tough. Who wants to be happy all the time and have fun all the time and be sharp all the time? And then, I don't know people who want to be wealthy all the time. Only those people feel like it's worth it. You can't ever be negative. Ever be negative. Chris, nobody's ever negative. Right. So the times that you are, don't be seen. Don't, don't. I, I tell people all the time, when I don't feel good and I just can't seem to shake it, I get in my car by myself, I turn my music up loud, and then I have whatever emotion I want. I scream, I yell, I cry, but to the outside world, it just looks like I'm singing. Because all they see is somebody in the car going, ah, and they go, man, that must be his song. He's into it. But when that car stops and I get out, I'm shocked, excited, I'm enthusiastic, enthusiastic, I'm extinguished. I'm ready to meet the next superstar. It's going to change their life and change mine. And you can't ever be caught in it. I think I should say that by anyone, especially your family. Some of you think, well, I, you know, I, I do, but I keep it for my team. I just tell my spouse, your spouse is your greatest cheerleader. Why would you want to bum them out all the time? A lot of you got spouses who won't do the business. Why? You don't understand why. I'll tell you why. Because everything that you feel negative about the business, you come home and tell them. You came home and told me all the negative crap that happens at the business. Why would I want to come? So now you can't even recruit your spouse because you dumped on them all the negativity. That's your greatest recruit. That's your biggest cheerleader. That's the last person you want to tell all the crap to. As a leader, you got to do everything first. You got to go out and do it first. You can't ask people to do stuff you're not willing to do. You got to go do it first. You, you got to go bonus if you want to build a team for people to bonus. You gotta do it. See, I felt that way about this training. I, I can't train people. I, I had great success in insurance and finance industry. 
became a director and did great things. But then in this industry, with this company and, and travel, I had to roll up my sleeves and get out there and get involved. Just get a team that I'm not involved. Yeah, I've done those things. I, I don't talk to you about doing something I have not done. Built a team of a couple thousand people in travel without bringing any of the people that I had in mind. I didn't do it because I was trying to get to the record. I did it because I need to know that what I know works here before I can teach anybody. It. You as a leader, you got to do it first. So you have no problem getting in someone's face and saying, I expect you to bonus. Let me help you and show you how. You can't say it if you don't do it first. So you should have a goal. You're going to bonus. You're going to get 10,000 dollars. You're going to get promoted. You're going to do all these things so that you have the ability to teach and demand this level of excellence from your team. Always remain a student. So you want to be a great leader? You got to be a great follower. You got to be a student. You can't ever get to the point where you think you know it all. Been in this industry now going on 34 years. And I still learn something different every day. I still read. I still watch videos. I still look at what other people are doing, what other leaders are saying. And every time I do that, I learn something. I get something out of it. And it helps me keep me better. I can be the same person saying the same thing without learning. Even if I'm not learning something new, I'm learning a new way to say something old that people may understand or receive. But you gotta stay a student and keep growing. At the point that the people follow you, know what you know, you no longer become necessary. See, you gotta always bring something to the table that you can teach them that you intend to leave. Because the minute they know what you know or know more than you know, you become unnecessary. So if you want to remain necessary as a you have to keep being a student and you got to grow. As a leader, never miss me. See, see, leaders don't miss me. Because leaders have people everywhere. And you should never not be where your people are. To provide support and leadership. Leaders don't miss me. Leaders don't make excuses. So you can either make excuses or make fun. You can't do both. And if you start to trend of making excuses, guess what your team will do? They'll come up with bigger and better excuses. And you build an entire team of people that rather than work, got an excuse for why they are. And you wonder why the team is not doing what it's looking for or working to its full potential. And it's because they learn a lot of excuses from you. So leaders don't make excuses. You got to be extremely coachable. So if you want to be a great leader, you got to be coachable. You got to be willing to allow some listen to everything. You need to do the win in this business has already been done and done. You may think you're coming up with something, but I promise you somebody's done it. Every couple of months, somebody says, I'm going to create a flyer and put it on every car I'm on. Every couple of months, for 30 something, I watch somebody get that right out of me. Real excited about it, and they're not going to say it. I mean, at this point, it's out of compliance. We had the right compliance to stop people from doing it. That's how often people came up with that idea. Now, let me just say that for a second. Compliance is there because it is the sum total of the things that we know for sure doesn't work. 
Not that we guess it doesn't work, we know it doesn't work. We know exactly the problems that it caused. We know exactly how it hurts your business and hurts your income. And that's why we put it in there not to do it. That's why it's in there. It's not in there to just mess with you or get on your nerves. It's in there to stop you from going down a path that's going to slow your growth and really maximize your earnings. That's why it's just that simple. You, you gotta act like a director. When you are one. You gotta act like whatever leader should go when you have before you ever get it. So you gotta walk and talk and you know, like a director. Before you ever get out of it. You gotta walk in that destiny. That's leadership. See, see, to be a great leader, your outline's got to be up and down. That's to be a great leader. Your downline's got to be is, if you want to be a great leader, you've got to be accountable. And people have got to be accountable to what you do, what you say. You say it. As he hears that sound, it seems to be the hardest thing. And it amazes me that you get to say it. See, this is an area I excel in because I, I, I get it. I got to do whatever I say. But I get to say what I'm going to do. So if I don't really want to do it, all I got to do is not say I'm going to do it. And then I got to do it. I get it. So I've mastered the ability to say no to stuff I don't want to do. Now people get mad at me all the time, but guess what they can never say? Never say Chris do the thing. Because I do. I'll say it, I'll do it. So they can say Chris says no a lot. Chris always saying no. Can't get Chris to do that. You, they can say all that, but nothing says I have to do that to win. What I have to do is be what I say and say what I mean. I get it. So I master it. I don't even say what I'm willing to do. That's what I do 100%. Learn to mean what you say. The same to you. Take the rest of these tips and stay positive in the cycle. And I'll see you at the top. Not just a tip down. Very tough. Thanks for spending your Saturday with me. We'll see you guys next time.